Well, hi everyone. This is Glitty Gem. I'm back. I have to do a new multiple sclerosis video. Uh, the previous one that I had, um, I had to, um, I didn't have to delete it, but I decided to go ahead and delete it uh, to, to prevent any kind of problems that I had uh, with any, cop any copy written licensed uh, material, which I wasn't aware um, because I actually got the information off of YouTube and I guess I didn't acknowledge the person's name from where I got the video from. So, um, so this is my new YouTube video, so stay tuned. Well, hello everyone. You like my look, makeup? I'm wearing orange today. Why is that? Does anybody know? Show of hands. How about you in the blue shirt? What's today? What is our topic today? You, in the office, I know you're trying to hide your phone, trying to uh, keep your manager from from uh, catching you. Watch the phone, right? Uh, <laughs> how about you over there on the other side? You, hey, what you doing? So, what day is it today? What day is it today? What day it is? Y'all tell me. What is it? Anybody? Show of hands. Well, yes, there you have it, people. It's Geek Day time. So, I am going to give you some information about multiple sclerosis today. Orange is their color, the ribbon color for multiple sclerosis. And um, this is just a way of me contributing to multiple sclerosis, doing a video on my channel. Yes, I'm not trying to get in trouble with YouTube. <laughs> so, I'm going to read my notes here on what is multiple sclerosis. Um, it's a long lasting disease that can affect your brain, spinal cord, and the optic nerves in your eyes. It can cause problems with vision, balance, muscle, muscle control, and other basic body functions. The effects are different for everyone. Some people have mild symptoms and don't need treatment, while others will have trouble getting around and doing daily tasks. Um, MS happens when your immune system attacks a fatty material um, called myelin sheaths. There are sleeves of fatty tissue that protect your nerve cells that are part of the uh, central nervous system and which carries messages back and forth between your brain, rest of your body. Your myelin sheaths can be damaged. That means your nerves won't be able to send and receive messages as they should. Because of this, it weakens your muscles, damage your coordination, and in worst cases, uh, paralyzes you. Affects 1 in 350 people and starts between ages of 20 and 50. It's not clear what causes it and there's no known cure. So um, basically, yeah, it's kind of sad because uh, people who are suffering multiple multiple sclerosis, um, you know, their body is deteriorating and there's no known cure. There's only treatments for it. And I will show you a video clip of um, people, famous people in the past that are alive and that are not with us anymore. So the first one I'm going to show you is um, Richard Pryor. Upload it right now. So you can take a look at that. Richard Pryor, an American comedian actor. He died at age 65. He was in two of my favorite movies, Superman 3 and See No Evil, Hear No Evil. Next one we have um, is also passed away. Um, Jacqueline Dupree. She is an, a British cellist, and here's a slideshow of her right now. Jacqueline Dupree died at age 42. She was an English cellist. Despite her short career because of her multiple sclerosis, she is regarded as one of the more uniquely talented cellists 
the second half of the 20th century. Her image forced her to stop at age 28. Next one I'm going to show is Clay Walker. And here's a clip of him now. Clay Walker, country music star age 49, was struck with MS in his mid-20s. Treatment helped Walker regain the use of his right hand and leg. My favorite song he plays is She Won't Be Lonely Long. The last one I'm going to show for this video is um, Selma Blair. And here's a clip of her now. Selma Blair is an American actress age 46. She came on the movie Legally Blonde, one of my favorite movies. She's from Southfield, Michigan. She announced her MS in an Instagram post. She has spasmodic dysphonia. It makes her voice sound shaky. Okay, so there you have it. Those are the four people I chose to put on my video for Multiple Sclerosis Awareness Month. And the next thing I want to discuss to you is on the treatment. Before we go into detail, I'm at, I actually have a diagram of how multiple sclerosis works. So let me read you what treatments there are. A number of treatments can improve how you feel and help your body working well. Doctors can prescribe medication, prescribe drugs that may slow the course of the disease, prevent or treat attacks, ease your symptoms, or help you manage the stress that comes with the condition. All right, so with that being said, I am gonna go ahead and start with a diagram see if there's any more notes that I have here. Um, I think the rest of the notes are on the diagram that I want to show you. Since I can't show you um, the video clip, because I would have really liked for you guys to watch the video clip, it would have been a lot easier on me. So, here in front of me, I have a diagram. Can you see that? You may not see, be able to see my face. But, I'll manage. So here is how it works. Um, I'm going to read it, be reading off my notes as I will point out. I'm sure we can see that. As I will point out areas on the diagram of what I'm going to explain how what multiple sclerosis is and how it affects the body. Okay, so uh, nerve cells or neurons. They are, you know. Um, they carry messages between the central nervous system so this and and the rest of the body so the central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord all right so a neuron is a specialized cell transmitting nerve impulses so they're just messages that we get and I'm gonna draw a little X right here like, like a little this is a message right there. And it's gonna travel into a neuron or nerve cell usually has a number of dendrites. Dendrites are extensions of a nerve cell. So this is where I say that it's gonna travel. It's gonna travel into a nerve cell, which are these vein looking things right here. So this guy is gonna go into these, this vein looking thing and the neuron has an axon. An axon or nerve fiber is a long, slender projection of a nerve cell or neuron that typically conducts electrical impulses. So this is the axon. The axon is this whole part right here. Um, it doesn't show on this diagram, but this is the axon. Um, this is the normal, this is a healthy, normal neuron, as you can see up here, it says normal neuron. Okay, and then this is the part where we get, where it starts to get to, where multiple sclerosis, how this affects. So the accent is this whole 
thing right here which is actually this slender like it says the slender part which is this yellow if I can highlight if I can write so it's this yellow line that goes across these red sponge looking things okay it's called myelin okay those orange sponge looking things is called myelin okay so this message goes into the neuron the nerve cell and um this is the accent right so in this accent there's gaps in this accent there's myelin and in between the myelin there's little gaps here so i'm going to point point out to you guys here there's little gaps here gaps here no looks like a little sausage right <laughs> It's like links of sausage so every in between that is an accent okay um the gap between one neuron and the next is called the synapse which permits a neuron to pass an electrical or chemical signal to another neuron so the synapse if this were to be on this next side like on this side which is not is actually down here at the bottom but let's say um the synapse starts see what happens is is that this message goes through the dendrites from the neuron or nerve cell and then it goes through the accent and it bounces off the myelin so it's it's a nerve fiber and so it goes so it goes through here to the end of the nerve and then let's just say let's just say the synapse is this this area right here there's nothing here there's a gap this is the synapse so this message is gonna bounce is gonna go down to the synapse which is the gap and from the gap is gonna jump into gonna go to the beginning of the next neuron the next nerve cell okay because this is the end of the nerve cell and this is the beginning so it's gonna jump from the synapse down to the beginning of the other neuron the other nerve so like i said if this was like on the other side it would have jumped and this was facing this way on this end this message would have jumped on and then the synapse would have been this gap area here but in this case in my diagram the gap is here and then it's going to jump onto this end to the dendrite on this end the dendrites are those vein looking things that carry messages through the neuron so you see how right here it starts to have like little wiggly lines that's part of the multiple sclerosis problem okay so i'm gonna read on with my notes it says information enters the neuron at the dendrite and passes along the axon to the to, to the synapse uh, neurotransmitters take the message across the synapse gap which I had already explained you know the synapse gap and then um, to a neighboring dendrite which is this one here at the bottom this is the neighboring den dendrite up here at the top the dendrite um, the axon is wrapped in myelin, which is like the insulation on an electrical cable. It's giving you an example of like what the myelin is. And the myelin is those sausage, kind of like sausage link looking things. And they're like little sponges. That, that That's myelin. It's actually covering, it's actually insulation for the axon. So... This means the nerve impulse impulses is protected from interruption and helps the message travel fast. 
So if this were to be, let's say, like, oh, let's use like our, our uh, terminological terms of today. This would be like the wireless network, you know, you know, a normal one would help transmit the message faster. And then this one would be like the ancient old um, way of communicating by internet with the cable. So it's not going to go so fast. So I'm continuing on with my notes on this. I hope you guys can bear with me. This is my first time giving lecture on a diagram for multiple sclerosis. Hope I'm doing well here. All right. So like I said, it was it's like a wireless internet with a broadband width when you do when you have a normal neuron. And then the one that isn't normal neuron is the one like I said, it's the ancient type of um, like the way it receives the messages. Sometimes it doesn't connect, sometimes it does. And so let me get into that. So the nerve impulse jumps between gaps in the myelin, which I showed you already. They're the ones that are in between these little they look like little sausages, that's the gap. So it so what it does, it just it just uh bounces off of here, you know. And if you have a healthy one, it'll bounce real easily. But since you don't have a healthy one, you see, look at the bottom. It'll just start doing all these little wiggly, jiggly, you know wiggly zigzag zig um you're just not it's just not getting the message fast enough where it needs to go because of this damage this is called demyelation damaged myelin which is demyelation i'm gonna read on with my notes um where so it jumps between gaps in the in the myelin, which that's what you want it to do. Um, you don't want the nerve impulse to go anywhere inside the myelin. It is made up of protein and fatty substances. So that's how what the inside looks like of a myelin, of the insulation. Um, you want it to jump over and through the axon to the next neuron. The gaps are called nodes of Ranvier. So that's a term. <clears throat> Instead of calling it gaps on the axon, it's called nodes of Ranvier. If the myelin sheath is damaged, the nerve impulses may slow down, be disrupted, or fail to get to their destination. Sorry. I'm trying to read my writing here. Uh, this is what happens in multiple sclerosis. This kind of nerve damage is called demyelination. Demyelation is any condition that results in damage to the protective myelin sheets that surrounds nerve fibers in your brain, optic nerves and spinal cord, causing neurological problems. If demyelation demyelation persists the neuron will die just as faulty insulation can cause problems for your wiring at home like when you have um, electrical problems at home and it's faulty wiring that's the same way demyelination happens demyelation can cause all kinds of problems it all depends where the nerve damage occurs. Neurons are not usually replaced when they die. The disabilities caused can be permanent, like cognition. I think I, I can pretty much get this diagram down because I kind of explained to you and showed you, you know, how that how a multiple sclerosis works and all that. So I'm gonna put this down. So, um, the disabilities caused can be permanent. 
like cognition, mobility, pain, depression, dizziness, incontinence. Mm, that's not a good one. Tremor, um, balance, numbness, vision, and swallowing. A uh, research foundation called MS Research. Um, and uh, treatments aim to A, reduce the inflammation that causes demyelination. B, grow new myel myelin before the damaged neuron dies. C, protect the myelin that is still there. And D, help people learn how to work around impaired nerve function functions. So this is what the MS research is trying to do to help with multiple sclerosis and trying to, um, you know, I guess there's no cure for it. So I guess it's just, you're just helping um, multiple sclerosis slow down and help the people who have multiple sclerosis kind of live with the disease. So um, that concludes all my notes on uh, multiple sclerosis. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I did. I had fun doing my makeup one more time. Now I am wearing really orange. This time I'm wearing orange all over. Eyeshadow, lipstick, nail polish, which in the, my first video, my eyeshadow was, I had a, I had like a smoky, like a halo eye look. But um, I liked it. I liked the halo eye look. It was nice. Um, the tutorial, the video is uploaded in there if you want to watch it. It's good. It's a, uh, I know it's 56 minutes long, but it's good. You, you know, it's well worth watching. All right. So I hope you enjoyed my video and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, hit the, notifi the notification bell and um, continue being one of my supporters. Love you guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Signing out.